Hello, Daniels here. Let's continue to the 6 Java Servlet and JSP tutorial. Let's copy Web5 and let's copy it and paste it under a new name, Web6. Then change the deployment URL. Let's go to Properties, Search Web, Web Project Settings and change the deployment root to web6. Now we're ready to work on the new project. Let's actually run it on the server. So let's start the server. In the meantime, while the server starts, let's go over what we have. We have a controller. And the controller, the servlet, our add passenger servlet, when we do a get request to it, it shows us the add passenger, add passenger JSP, which is our form to add a passenger. And when we submit the form, the form goes to the do post action. <laughs> but so far, the do post action does nothing. So in this tutorial, let's actually write the Java code that will process the form. So the first question is, how do we get a parameter? So I'm going to do string first name, and I want to get the first name parameter. So let's look at the JSP file. One second. All right. You see the first name input field. This is the name. So if I want to get it, I want to use this name. The first name. If I want to get, for example, date of birth, I want to use the value of the name attribute, DOB. So for first name, it will be it will be this. So I'm going to request get parameter first name. And for example, we can print the first name, print out the first name. we we'll get the first name, set it to this variable, and then print it. Let's see what's currently deployed. We have, oh, I have a different application deployed. I'm going to remove it. And then I'm going to deploy this Web6 application. There we go. Web6 is deployed, is going to be deployed. Here it is, successfully deployed. And just to show how it looks, we have the form, I'm going to localhost 8080, and here um, localhost 8080, Web6, and add passenger. Uh, I mistyped it. Yeah, so local host 8080. Okay, that's good. 10 slash web6 slash add passenger. Okay. Okay, this shows us our form, and that's correct. So let's say the first name is my name. I'm just, I'm just, here it's just, it's just for the example, and I'm going to click add new passenger. And we can see in the console, okay, I printed, okay, so I made a bit of a mistake here. I just printed the string first name, but let's actually print the, va the value of the variable. Okay, there we go. I'm going to right click 
and publish. Now it's been republished, so I'm going to go back, going to click again, add new passenger, and in the console, we can see first name Daniel. <laughs> That's how I picked up the parameter. Let's go ahead and pick up the rest of the parameters. Okay, so we have uh, last name, so string last name equals to request get parameter last name. Uh, okay. Oops. Then we had, uh, I think we had date of birth. So let's do string date of birth. I'm going to date of birth is eventually going to be a date object. But let's just get the string into a date of birth row variable. And after that, we're going to take the that the value of that variable and turn it into a date object. <laughs> Oops, get parameter. Now that we got the date of birth string, let's split it because we have, as you saw, a day, a month, a day, and a year. So let's split it with Java into the three parts. We want to split on the forward slash. So, sorry, we want to split on the forward slash so that we will get the month before the first slash, the date between the first and second slashes, we'll get the day, the day between the first and the second slash, and we'll get the year after the second slash. So we want to split on the forward slash, and that's how we do it, date row split forward slash, you might wonder forward slash. You might wonder what these two slashes are. These are escape characters. <laughs> forward slash in Java may have a special value, so in order to split on the literal forward slash on the character forward slash, and ignore its special value, we put two left slashes, and those two left slashes are escape characters, and they make Java ignore the special meaning of a forward slash and treat it as a regular character. There we go. So now what this returns is an array, a string array, the date of birth array, and, these, and then the zeroth index of the array is the month. So we can do string, or actually, well, we can, yeah, let's do string. String month, it's dob array zero. In, um, in the American system, the month comes before the day, so I kind of assume this is the month. String day, dob, dob array one, and the year is the string year is dob array two. Okay, now we have all those things and we can create a date object out of them. So let's see how we create a date object. We're going to use the calendar object cal equals to calendar eh, calendar get instance and here we do cal set calendar dot year and we put the year then we do uh yeah some okay so now you see okay it's complaining because year is a string and not an integer so let's do integer parse int year. So now we turn it, now I think we have to import the package, for, well, let's see what it wants. Oh, actually, I'm sorry, I misspelled it. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I just misspelled parse int. There we go, parse integer. Okay, it's happy. Well, let's do the same thing for calendar, um, 
for calendar month. Here is the month constant. Let's find the month constant. And the value is our integer month value. And uh, in integer parse in month. And the last one is the day. Oh, uh, sorry, calendar day. Let's see, um, day of month, right? We day of month, and that will be in our case that will be the day. We have to do integer powers end and day. Okay, there we go. And great now we got our calendar object and the calendar object has a has a method called get date or so actually i think get time uh, get time and this get time method returns a date object dob we need to import the package for the date class Java util is the package. There we go, we imported it. And now that we have it, great, so now that we, are, we have the date object, uh, let's move on. I think we also, in addition to the date and the first and last name, we also had the gender. Uh, gender, remember, was an enumeration. So it's, um, there we go, so string gender equals to request get parameter and then we will get the gender parameter all right now we got everything let me look at the time okay so this is it for this tutorial in the next tutorial we'll continue working on this but this is cool already we get the form submitted and when the form is submitted uh, all this processing takes place to get the information out of the form. In the next tutorial, we'll continue right along here. Thank you and see you next time.